Okay, so we've got the um, all the outside walls done and the floors. So the last thing we need to enclose the building now are the main roof forms. And uh, so again, just to bring back the, the drawings, you can see we've got the two main roof forms and then the, the other two little ones I'll do afterwards. So these two bigger roof forms go over the interior of the building. And they're both the same type of roof, even though they slope in different directions. They're both single sloping uh, roof forms. So whenever you see a roof form like that, uh, you should know, or you'll know in future, that you can make those with roof buffer print. So you only need to use the other tools if you've got a roof that you can't draw in plan. So footprint basically means plan. So with that tool, you draw the roof form in a plan view. And before I do that, I'm just going to open up one of my elevations just to remind you how I've got the level set up. And so you can see there we've got the parapet level and that sets the top of the wall. So that's this level here. So the tops of all of those walls should go to that level. And then we've got this um, level at the moment that's set for the ceiling. And that can also be used for the roof. And it's a common approach in building that you pitch the roof from the same point as your ceiling. So is that something we've thought about before, where the roof structure comes from? Um, you'll see it more as you do, especially as you start to draw these things. But the way it works is you have the, the rafters, which you'll see in a minute, or the, the roof form will show you where the rafters would be. And the rafters, when they slope down, end up sitting on the same point on the top plate uh, as your ceiling joists do. So it ends up being exactly the same point. So it's the top of your top plate um, where the, uh, the roof is projected from. And again, that's what supports your ceiling as well. So we can use the same level, in other words, that we have for the ceiling to start doing our roof. And so I'm going to go to that floor plan. So level one CL, or whatever you've called it. Okay, so then you can see that we've got the, uh, the walls there I want to do this um, roof at the back, and so the walls that go around that part stop here. So if you can look at that drawing, you can see that this wall supports that roof. So we need to extend that wall uh, from that corner up to here. But I can't extend the wall that I've got. If I stretch that up, of course being all in 3D, that's going to extend it on the other levels as well. And we don't want that. So I'm going to undo that. So instead of extending that wall, I'm going to draw a new wall. And now, so I just want to check this. Yeah, so you want to know which side the wall was drawn on. So you can see there that the grips go on the left hand side. And if you look at the properties, we know it's finished face exterior because that's the way the wall was drawn. So that tells us this is the exterior side of the wall. And you do need to keep on top of that when you're making especially your external walls. Uh, so if I go to make a new wall, again, finish face exterior, and then I'm gonna check the height. The height there you can see is coming up as parapet, which is what it should be. And I also wanna check that the wall type is the same as the one I used uh, for the exterior walls, and that's my existing 250 mil wall. And so then I can simply go from the corner either the corner or even that intersection just above that. But notice I'm on the left hand side, that's the most important thing. And then I'm going to come up and you can see the wall goes to the right, which is how it should be, and then just join it to the wall above. As long as we touch that wall somewhere, it'll connect it properly. So we need that before we can do this next roof. Because again, that wall all the way along supports the roof and so now I just need to go to Roof by Footprint. And, well, at first you'll see it's on pick walls. And I can pick the top and the bottom wall. Now that we're doing it differently this time, uh, we'll just take it to the edge. Later you might want to bring that back. But for now we'll just take it to the edge of the wall, so the, the bottom edge. And then I'm going to pick the right-hand side of this wall that I've just drawn. 
And you can see there we've got a problem because it wants to go to the left. It's trying to go to the exterior side. It's fine, we can just flip it. And because I've flipped it at this stage before connecting it to the other edges, it will flip that line separately. Now, you might have a problem with that. Um, you'll see sometimes, uh, I'll just show you what can happen. If they're joined, and then you flip things, uh, let's just so do that again. It's going to behave itself now, but I just want to show you what can happen because I often have this problem. So now, if I flip it, oh no, it's doing it by itself. You'll see sometimes, though, I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll know when you see it, that they'll flip as a group if they're connected. And that can be a bit frustrating. So when that happens, just remember that you don't have to use pick walls. To make the edge of the roof that you're trying to create, you can use the one next to it, pick lines, and that lets you pick anything. And it won't try to go to one side or the other, and it won't move if you uh, flip your wall or anything like that. So that's a good option. And then the other option to remember is that you can always just draw lines. You don't need to use these picking options at all. You can draw a line along the edge where you want it to go, and that works just as well. So we also need an edge over here, and for that one, I am going to make sure I use pick walls. That's the only one where you really need to use pick walls because uh, you'll see in a minute that'll let me give an eave. So I pick the four sides of the roof, and then I'm going to use trim to corner to join those four edges together, and then I'm going to think about the slope. So you might have noticed I didn't really worry if I had to find slope. Uh, ticked or not, because I'm going to think about that now, and you can see here we've got this little angle symbol coming up on every line. I only want it on this edge on the right, so I'm going to select the other three lines, just doing a window right to left, and I'll turn to find slope off for those three. So I've only got it on for this one, and we can see clearly we've got the angle symbol there. And so I want to change that angle and you can do that by selecting the line and then the angle comes up showing the slope for that edge and it'll be, I'm just guessing here, about 5 degrees I'd say so you select the edge, so that when I select that line that's got the angle symbol then the angle comes up so I've got that angle and then to put the overhang in you can either go up onto the options bar or you can click on the little number that comes up there on the line and put the eaves in and I'm going to say probably about 200. But again, it's easy to adjust this, so you don't need to make that exactly right. But yes, probably about 200. So, and the reason I'm not too worried about uh, the exact settings for this roof is that you're more than likely going to change it uh, as you work on your design. So I'll finish that now, and then go into 3D so you can see how that's working. So you can see already the slope is probably correct because it comes from the point where we know it's got to start. And actually maybe we'll go to a section view so you can see that. So you can see there, this is where the roof is pitching from, from that um, level, the ceiling level. And then notice how it pitches from that corner, not from the corner of the roof. That's where you need to think a little bit about the construction. And it makes perfect sense, but you'll see if you don't use pick walls, to make your edges, it'll pitch uh, from this corner, which you don't want. The way they build is they have the rafters sitting on a point on the wall, and then the eaves project downwards from there. I know it's a little thing, but it's it's worth getting right. And um, so, so that's all fine. And then I can, in properties, change the roof type, probably just the thinnest one, generic 125. So it's not such a big, thick thing. And you can see there, of course, because it's not as thick, we've got a bigger gap there between the top of the parapet and the roof and that's what we want. Did I talk to you about apron flashing last week? A a apron flashing? Which is, uh, okay, so I'll just show you briefly. So when you have a roof that um, is attached to a parapet, it needs to have flashing. And flashing, if you're not sure, is just the waterproofing. So the flashing needs to wrap around from the roof up into the wall. And so the flashing is usually, well it used to be lead, now it's other types of materials, but 
basically, if you think of it as lead, um, that is um, a little bit flexible but still you know, pretty rigid. And uh, so that needs to be stuck into the bricks. And then the bricks hold it down. So you need enough bricks to hold down the flashing. You can't just have it, if you have it like this, where the roof is near the top of the wall, that causes problems. So all I want you to think about there is the fact that you often do have a fairly decent expanse of uh, brickwork on your parapet above the roof. That's normal. So that's the parapet wall that's going to project up. But then these other walls, of course, shouldn't be sticking up. They should be sitting under the roof. So each of these, if you select them, you can go to attach top base, choose the roof, and they'll tuck in under the roof. And it's just this one that's going to stick up. So again, this wall, even though it's going full length, if I attach it to that roof, it just attaches the part that's under the roof, of course. And again, we've got a nice power, but then sticking up behind our roof, and that's what we're trying to do. And so then, of course, this wall as well sits in under the roof. So once it's attached, it'll do that. So that's the basic setup for the roof construction. And I mean, you could bring it up a little bit. So if you wanted to uh, raise the roof slightly, you could either stretch it with that arrow. Just don't take it too far. Oh, I think the standard says 400 and something mil. It's in the BCA, it, it's got a, got a measurement, but yeah, it's around 400, I think. So if you measure in the elevation, you can see there, it's, well, 350. Okay, so I've gone a bit too far, um, but you, you'd probably get away with it. So the other option, instead of um, stretching it, you can always type the angle in, and that's going to do the same thing. So if you make it 7, of course it's steeper, but again that's probably getting a bit close. Yes, yeah, so I think 5 should be good, but if you have to, you can push up a little bit. The other option is to slope it the other way, so if you want to change the design completely, you can have it sloping from this edge and go up this way. And that's a good option a lot of people have used before. Ah, oh, go away, stupid thing. Yeah, there we are. Um, okay, so that's uh, the back roof, and then for the other roof, Again, you'd be on the same level, so level 1 CL. And then, again, roof by footprint. And you can start with pick walls. So, again, I'll pick the inside of this wall because that's our parapet that comes up above this roof. And then it also goes behind this one. This has a little parapet and coming around here. And then on this side of the wall, so not on the back, on the front. And so then the roof comes over this wall. So we're going to pick the bottom edge of that one. And here you can see this is where it's going to be. Yep, yeah, there we are. That's what I was talking about before. So you can see there, when I flip it, it's flipping all of them. And that's a problem. So I'll undo that. And I'll show you a few little workarounds. Okay, so here, unfortunately, I can't draw a line or use pick lines because I want the options that the pick walls option gives you. It's one of those things you just have to get used to. Uh, pick walls, uh, of course, lets you pick walls, but it also gives you a few options that you don't get with the other uh, ways of making the edge. So I can't just draw a line. So instead, I'm going to pick that um, like I did before, but then I'm going to stretch the ends so they're not touching the others. Then I can flip it, and you can see it is flipping this one, but I'll live with that because I'm going to... Um, I'll win on that side anyway, that's fine. So, if it is a problem for you though, you could always delete that one and that one. You can just draw with the line tool or pick lines, however you want to make it. That's fine. So I know it can be a bit confusing at first, but essentially, uh, this one has to be... Pick oh, sorry, that's gone and flipped, so we want it on the bottom. Yeah, okay, so it's being a pain. Still trying to connect to the others. So I'm going to flip it to the outside and then go and remake these other edges. You could make pick walls work for them, but I'll uh, instead just keep it simple and draw them with the line tool and just trace over those edges. I think it will work much better than using pick walls. And there we are. So. Again, those are all the edges I need. I can use trim to corner to join them all together. 
Okay, so that's the basic setup. So again, all of these edges sit inside the walls, except for the one at the bottom, which needs to sit on the outside edge of the wall. And then again, I can select all of those edges except that bottom edge and turn the fine slab off. And so you should be thinking, if you have a roof that has only one slope, like both of these roofs do, you should only need the slope set to one of your edges. If you're thinking it needs to be set to this one as well, that's the way I used to think about it, and it doesn't. Okay, so even though it does slope from this edge technically, you'll see in a minute, it doesn't need the slope there, just on this one. And again, it's about the same as the other one, about five degrees. Set that to five. And for this, there's no overhang. So you can leave the edge there sitting uh, on the edge of the wall. You don't need to put eaves in there. So that's it. If I finish this one, and again, look at it in 3D. Let's start to see how it goes together. It's still the 400 mil thick roof, so I'll change that to the 125. And you can see that the roof sits nicely inside all of these walls but we don't want it to sit inside this one. We want that wall to, uh, to go under the roof. So I'm going to select that wall and then again, attach top base, choose my roof and there we are. So that's pretty much uh, the whole enclosure done. And you can see there, so we've got these parapets that still project up above the, um, the roof and enclose it, which is how it is in real life. Um, but again, sits on the edge there. And you can put uh, fascias and gutters on if you're wondering. Uh, there are tools for that. But they're fairly easy, so I might even just show you quickly because they're so easy. Once you've got that set up, roof fascia under the roof panel. So if you're not sure, fascia is the thing that the gutters attach to. So if I choose roof fascia, I'm just going to use the default one and pick the edge of my roof. How easy is that? And then go to the back. Pick that one as well. And then I'll go back to architecture panel and on the same menu under roof, I'll go to roof gutter and then just pick the top edge of my fascia. And there we are, I've got a nice gutter. What was that soffit? Oh, the soffit? Yeah, yeah so soffit's just, uh, the way I think of it is like an exterior ceiling. So you wouldn't really have much of a, a, a soffit or a soffit here but um, this would be the only place where you'd have one. So that part under the roof there, where you could have some lining, and often it's flat, uh, where they'll have usually just uh, fibre cement instead of plasterboard to enclose that um, underside of the roof. Yeah, so that's just a feat. But basically it's a ceiling that's outside the building. Okay, so that's um, probably enough. And so if you have a go at doing those two roofs, then we can come back to doing the other two little roofs, which are actually a lot more fiddly than, than these two big ones. So I'll give you a bit, bit of time to do those.